Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of Crank, the second mini album from the band Oz. Oz was a visual key Japanese band that started in the year 2004 and I've actually started listening to them at the end of 2012. Back then they were still active. A year later they've suddenly disbanded and there's no new music ever since. So basically I've stumbled upon this band because back in 2012 I was very much into Japanese music, especially metal bands. I've even discovered that most of the visual key bands were just nu metal, but in funny clothes. And later, like in 2011 and 12, all of these bands shifted their sound from that hybrid of nu metal and Japanese rock into more metalcore and Japanese rock hybrid. So you have a photo of the band right here. We have Natsuki as the vocalist, Aki and Tama on guitars, Nao on bass and Zuki on the drums. This is the mini album we are going to review today that was released 10 years ago. So we are basically celebrating the 10th anniversary of it. I have no idea why they call it a mini album when it's basically an EP, extended play. This was the final release from the band, but it's not the only thing I want to review today. I also want to review the previous EP, Stigma. What's interesting about this thing is that the limited edition features three songs that were featured on a previous single called Soma or something like that. I'm also going to review Edge of Desire, a standalone single that was released in summer 2012. And what's interesting about this band is that there's a complete best album. This is one of the best things I've ever heard about. This is basically the entire discography of Oz. It has all of the albums, all of the mini albums, EPs, singles, everything. Just everything is here. It's on four CDs and in chronological order. This is just amazing. So the final CD actually has all of the tracks they've made in the year 2012. We have the Soma single, the Stigma EP, the final mini album, Edge of Desire single, and the final song the band ever wrote called To Continue. So Corruption Part 2 is actually what we are going to review today. All of these 15 songs. The production is tight, it's very clean and heavy at the same time. I don't know who made it because there are not many informations about this band or the production like at all on the web. What I do enjoy here is the snare sound. The snare sound is just perfect. I love these deep and crunchy snares and it's on all of the songs. Message of the tracks is diverse. There are some songs about love, romances, sex, drugs, revenge, taking control of your life. Basically, each song is about a different topic. Structure of the music is pretty basic, standard intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, breakdown or a solo or a bridge and then chorus again. So the first six tracks here are from the Crank EP. It starts with Eve. It's a great intro. I enjoy the growls in the background. The sinister atmosphere this one has. 7 out of 10. Succubus is a very melodic song. I enjoy the guitar riffs here, the bass, the drums. But the vocals could have been better. Some of the singing, like in the chorus, I am not a big fan of. Everything else is great, so another good song, 7 out of 10. Holy Crap BGM is one of the highlights from this EP. I enjoy this track a lot, it reminds me of Slipknot's Iowa period. The drummer especially. The song is probably about hating on the pub genre of music. It's hard to tell because BGM can mean a lot of things. I think here it's about background music, basically fuck background music. I might be wrong, it's hard to interpret this shit, but what I do enjoy about this song are all of the vocals, there is no clean singing here, just screaming and growling, amazing guitar riffs, it's mostly a new metal song with some death metalish vibes here and there, I really love it. 9 out of 10. I Killed Yesterday's Me features a more new metalish sound with that standard Japanese rock choruses. That's typical for a Japanese band to blend nu metal verses with those weird choruses they always do. Sometimes it sounds good, sometimes it's shitty. 
Here it's actually good. I enjoy this song a lot. It's my second favorite thing on this EP. 8 out of 10. Destination sounds like a song that could have been an anime opening. I really enjoy it, but it's not on the same level as the previous two songs. It has too much singing for me. It could have been better, but it's a good song. 7 out of 10. And the final track, Against. Uh, you know, again and against. They are so smart in Japan. I love this track, especially the instrumental work here. The vocals, on the other hand, just good. It's a very positive sounding song. I am not a big fan of these kind of tracks, but it's fine here. Another 7 out of 10. Now we have the tracks from the Stigma EP. Stigma is a perfect opener. I love the instrumental work here. It's a shift from that nu metal vibe towards more metalcore stuff. While I enjoy the instrumental approach and very experimental vibe of this song, I am not that big fan of the vocals here, too much singing. I do enjoy the screams and growls, but that singing is too much for me. Still a great song, 8 out of 10. Trust is the worst song on here. I really don't like the vocals here. I think they are mediocre at best. The singing is cringy here as fuck. The instrumental work, it sounds like a filler track from some shitty anime about football or some shit. I don't like this. It's an average song, 5 out of 10. Blast on the other hand is a very good track. It has that Gurugamesh vibe. I don't know if you know that band Gurugamesh, it's also in VK band from Japan. I really loved their music and I'm happy that Gurugamesh reunited this year. Blast has those cool nu metal vibes about it, but some of the singing here just doesn't vibe with me. So 7 out of 10. And the final track on the standard Stigma EP edition, Flashback. It's the highlight of this EP. I love this song very much, especially the chorus. The chorus sounds so majestic, the instruments and the vocals. I am surprised with this track because I usually tend to dislike singing in Japanese music, but here it's done perfectly. 10 out of 10, stellar song. Now we have 3 tracks from the Soma single. Reverse is my second favorite song here. It has those nu metal vibes when it comes to the instrumental work, it reminds me of old school corn stuff. But it also has some of those circus vibes. I am not a big fan of the circus, but here it truly works. Everything is perfect here. The vocals, the instrumental work, I love the bassist here. The guitar riffs as usual are amazing and the drummer is killing it. Another 10 out of 10, very atmospheric track. Unseal is more mellow than the previous song, it tries to be a more atmospheric approach, but I think Reverse was better, this is just a good song, again, not a big fan of the vocals here, especially the singing wasn't nice, everything else was great. 7 out of 10. And the 13th song, which I cannot even pronounce, Ex Dices or whatever. It sounds very romantic and nostalgic, but it isn't really for me. I think the women will enjoy this song because they adore the vocalist voice. I really don't like it. I think the vocals here are very weak, but I do enjoy the instrumental work, especially the guitar solo. It's full of emotions and touch. So this is just a decent song that I sometimes replay, 6 out of 10. And now we have that standalone single Edge of Desire, I really dig this one, it has a more of nu metal atmosphere in the verses, yet again standard Japanese chorus, good song, great solo, 7 out of 10. And the final song Oz has ever written, to continue. It's weird for me that Japanese bands always do this thing, they always make a farewell song. I actually enjoy this song not so much because it sounds very positive and I am not a fan of that stuff, but I really like the instrumental work here, especially the guitar solo. The vocals here are actually good, some of them are not, but it's a cool song, a gift to the fans, so 6 out of 10 decent stuff. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable and the flow is fitting, replayability, yeah. It's a good album or a compilation or singles or mini albums or EPs. Just buy that complete best album edition where you get all of the Oz songs. The only song that I didn't enjoy here was Trusty, it just sucks us. 
everything else was either good or great. Flashback and Reverse are the highlights for me. I just adore those songs. It's funny because I haven't listened to this band for like 8 years, yet I still remembered some of the songs like Stigma or Sakiwas. It was so weird. It's like all of these memories just came back to me. So those were the final 15 songs Oz has ever written. I'm sure that I'm going to review everything else from them in time, in time. Thank you for watching. Celebrate the anniversary today by spinning these songs with me. They deserve some love. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you in my other reviews. Bye!